Where the hell is that damn phone? Uh, why the hell did it get in there? Hello? Hello? This is your 11 o'clock alarm call, Mr. O'Malley. What the, Dory? What the hell are you playing at? Oh, just my little joke, <sighs> Jerry, that's all. You're a bit old for jokes, aren't you? Oh, just because you've got a sore head, don't be taking it out on me. I'm sorry, Dory. In fact, I'll put it in writing. If you just keep your voice down a wee bit. Was there an orgy on here, or what? Ah, uh, no. I just had the... Uh, Jack and a couple of lads around for a few games of cards. And did you win anything? I can't remember. I'm not surprised. Would you like me to make you a bit of breakfast? No, I couldn't. You know, when my sonny used to have a feed of drink, I used to make him a big breakfast the next morning. Sausages, rashers, eggs, fried bread. The greasier, the better. God, I wonder if that would kill them. I think I'll go out. Uh, in your stocking feet? Uh, maybe not. Uh, better get me willies. And I'd better go and get something from the kitchen to clean up this mess. Listen, I'm sorry about the mess. I'd have cleaned it up a bit, you know, if I knew you were coming. But I wasn't expecting you until tomorrow. Asher, I told you. This week I'm doing Monday for Tuesday. And last week I did... Thursday for Tuesday, and next week I am doing Wednesday for Tuesday. Come to think of it, Tuesday doesn't really suit me at all. Do you understand? I think so. Well, that's good, because I'm not sure that I do. You know, I'm going to a wedding tomorrow. Well, no, you have a nice day. Since all these young ones started living in sin, I hardly ever get a day out anymore. Did you ever think of living in sin, Jerry? Can't say it, Dory. They say it's cheaper. We never thought of it in my day either. Well, not with Father Duggan around anyway. He was always given out about fornication off the altar. I didn't even know what it meant, but it sounded like good fun. I tried to look it up in the dictionary once, but I couldn't spell it. Right. I'll leave you to it. I better go out and do a few bits and pieces. And I'm sorry again about the mess. I'd have cleaned it up a bit if I knew you were coming. Ah, sure, that would be like buying a dog and barking yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a fine, handsome man, even with a hangover. What a bloody messy one. Right, these are all for the recycling anyway. Do you know, I don't believe in this recycling crack at all. Imagine drinking something out of a bottle made from second-hand glass. <laughs> Jack O'Dowd, I'll kill you. Is that any way to talk to your favourite farmer? Sneaking up on a poor woman like that on a Monday morning. You could have given me a heart attack. Actually, you don't have a heart. The way you're treating me all these years. Mm -hmm. well, give me an old dance and leave you in peace. Oh, leave me alone. You're still drunk from last night. How did you hear about last night? Jerry's after telling me. And you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Leading a fine man like him astray. He has responsibilities. And I don't, I suppose. Well, for your information, he's the man that bought all the beer. Where is he, anyway? Did you not see him outside? No. Well, he must be in one of the sheds. Or maybe he went up to the feed. Go on, you better go out and find him. I am a man. Come on. What do we want around the floor? Would you leave me alone? Is it any wonder you're still a bachelor? Ah, come on, come on. Remember the nights in the Starlight Ballroom? All of us dancing till we couldn't dance no more. And then the walk home afterwards. Clear summer nights and there wasn't a cloud in the sky. Back to my fun times, weren't they? Aye, they were. Right, let's get rid of the Monday morning blues. Oh, all right then. But just once around the floor and then you're out of here. Right, give me a hand to move this table. What? Well, we need a bit of space. <laughs> oh, all right. And now in the chair. Ah, this is ridiculous. Ah, relax. It'll only take a minute and then you'll be able to let yourself go. What's more, that's not really well. Will you let yourself go? <laughs> right, ready. Maybe there's just one on the radio. You know, you should think about becoming a pioneer. Is it not working? Here, 
just, uh, we were I, just... I was just giving Dory a bottle of love. Shut up. Monday. Shut up, you. Your daddy's not here. Ah, uh, so I see. Is he paying you to learn dancing? No, there's no need to get up with it. Be quiet, Jack. I will not. You're after doing a full morning's work before I got here. Clearing away all them beer bottles and cans. And besides, you're entitled to a couple of minutes off. You mean Dad's been drinking? After everything I told him about mixing alcohol and medication. But sure, your daddy only had a couple of minerals. Minerals? They're the only minerals I ever seen with a head on them. And you're the first man to pass out. Oh, this gets worse. Would you be quiet? Go on, you better go out of here. Sure, I need to give you a hand up the back. I'll manage. Just, just go. All right, but if you want me, I won't be far away. You shouldn't listen to what Jack says. He exaggerates. I know my father. I know how stupid he can be. Och, look. Your father only had a few friends over last night. They had a few games of cards and they had a couple of beers while they were at it. Where is the harm in that? He's lonely and he needs a bit of company. Look, I'm sure there's many the time you had too many yourself and were carried home legless. Well, maybe not. <laughs> But if you haven't, I have. <laughs> well, why doesn't that surprise me? Where is he anyway? He's outside. Why don't you go out and help look for him? And these good shoes? I don't think so. Ah, oh, please yourself. Oh, that man is never where he should be. Maybe you'd give me a hand to move back the furniture. Can you not move that yourself? It's just a table and a couple of chairs. I know, but my old back isn't great. When we and Sonny were going out together, we used to do our bit of curtain and lacy shed. And one night we were there going for gold, as they say, when this bloody tomcat let us squeal out of it in the corner. And I jumped up and something snapped. And it wasn't my elastic. <laughs> Dory, I did not need all that detail. Come on, so we'll start with the table. shouldn't take long, why? Well, there's someone calling to see Dad later. I wouldn't want her to think he lives in a tip. Her? Who's her? Well, if you must know, it's Ruth Hickey. Oh, she's that snooty one that lives in the big house up the dairy road. If by snooty you mean that she has breeding and good manners, then yes, because she has been a godsend to this area. Breathing or not, she still has to get into her drawers one leg at a time. The same as you and me. Look, just finish cleaning up the rest of that mess. And you tell Dad I will be back to have this chat with him very, very soon. I'm sure he can't wait. <laughs> Who does she think she is telling me what to do? Jerry hired me, not her. Just because she manages a little cafe in the town. She thinks she's Lady Muck. It's that small. If you wanted to get fart, you'd have to go outside. Is she gone? Oh, just this minute. If you try hard enough, you can smell her exhaust fumes. Oh, not you again. She loves me, really. That's a funny carry on with your daughter, Jerry. I thought daughters were supposed to be afraid of their fathers. Yeah, Helen had never heard of that. She's more like her mother than her mother ever was. Come again? Ach, you know what I mean. At least she didn't find out about last night, or I'd have never heard the end of it. Well, uh, she might have heard something about it. Ach, you didn't tell her. It wasn't me, Dory, let it slip. Liar! It was him, Jerry. He blurted the whole thing out. You bloody idiot! Well, how was I supposed to know it was some sort of state secret? Anyway, as them economists like to say, we are where we are. You know, Jack O'Dowd, if you had any more brains, you'd be twice the idiot you already are. <laughs> ah, come on, Dory, listen. Maybe you come out for another drink with me tonight. Well, that's about as likely as a TD getting penalty points. <laughs> Jerry, would you like a cup of tea before I start in the bedrooms? <laughs> no, I couldn't, Dory. I could, though. Well, all you'll get from me 
as the boiling kettle after all the trouble you caused here this morning. What did I do? Don't get me started. Don't get me started. What did I do? Why is she always talking nice to you and only ever is a harsh word for me, huh? Yeah, I pay her wages, I suppose. No, there's something more to it than that. She looks at you funny, and she's always standing up for you. Now you come to mention it. Well, anyway, you just stay away from her. Me and her sort of have an understanding. Oh, <laughs> you can tell that all right. <laughs> Who the hell can that be? People that know me usually come to the back door. Except your daughter. Ah, she's aw just awkward. Anyway, it's not her. She has her own key. You go and answer it. I'm settled here. What did your last slave die of, huh? Go on, that doorbell is like a drill in my head. And don't let anyone in. First it was Dory coming to annoy me, and then Jack with his carry on. Now someone else. God, have you no mercy on me? Oh, God, that's my bloody mobile phone. Why the hell didn't I put it on silent? It's Eleanor. You reached the voice mailbox of Jerry O'Malley. Please leave a message after the beep. Beep. <laughs> there. Now I'll fix it. It doesn't ring again for a while. There's a uh, Mrs. Hickey at the door, and she wants to see you. Mrs. Hickey. Is that the woman from the big house in the Dairy Road? Where is she now? At the door. You left her at the door. But you Why didn't you bring her in? You should not let anybody in. I can't didn't mean her. What's the poor woman going to think? How was I supposed to know? He said not to let anyone in. I just can't seem to get anything right today at all. And Dory's mad with me too. Ah, but with Dory it's passion. I know it is. <laughs> I wonder what that hecky one wants for him. I'm sorry about that. Does he leave me standing at the door like that? Jack didn't think. But you should not let her in. Be quiet. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean you. Think nothing of it, Mr. O'Malley. And please, call me Ruth. By the way, here's a little cake I baked earlier. My mother always told us never to call empty-handed. You can have it with your afternoon tea. Thank you, you shouldn't have. He couldn't look at tea today. He's hungover. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind, Jack. I just had a bit of a late night, that's all. I understand, Mr. O'Malley. Oh, please, call me Jerry. Oh, no, and on, Jack. Would you have a seat? The armchair here is nice and comfortable. Oh, no, I prefer a hard chair. I have a little desk trouble. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear! Those are not the words I'd use. What the hell happened? Where, where did the chair go? I don't know, but... I don't think you're right over the effects of last night. I think you should head home. You could be right there. Uh. But if you ever want to call to my house, I'd love a jam sponge. I remember that. Go home. Mine's is the first farmhouse in the right up after the church. <laughs> I'm sorry about that fella. He's not married. You know the type. Ah, can I get you a drink or something? No thanks, I'm fine. Just sit down and talk to me. There you go. I'm all yours. I'll be frank with you, Jerry. I've been looking for a willing farmer for some time now. Uh, you yeah. have? Yes. And then um, I was having a cup of tea in that charming little tea house your daughter runs. Oh, she's a lovely girl. You must be so proud of her. Oh, I am. Anyway, I was telling her about my little problem, and she suggested I come and see you. And um, what's your little problem? I need a flat back lorry. Oh, you mean a flat bed lorry? <laughs> That's right. You have one. I do, but it's off the road at the moment with a steering problem. Oh, but you will get it fixed, won't you? I mean, the ICA is relying on you. The ICA? Yes. 
Our build is 50 years old in two weeks' time, and our anniversary is coinciding with the Baltimore Festival in the town. There's a parade of local businesses and organisations through the town, and we're going to put on a live display commemorating our 50 years. That's why we need your lorry. Yeah. So, the sooner you get it fixed, the better. Yeah. Otherwise, you could all end up in Cairn River, you know, with faulty steering. Oh dear. Ah, uh, I'm only joking. Uh, I'll get it fixed. Uh, who'll be driving the lorry? You will, I hope. Oh, say you will. As long as I don't have to get dressed up as a woman. No, I think you'll be all right, just as you are. Well, not as I'm dressed right now. I will get spruced up a wee bit. Oh, there's nothing wrong with good, honest toy. My father was a farmer. He had 200 acres in the Derry Tyrone border. Oh, I see. You have big, strong farmer hands. They're just like my father's. Ah, uh, they're all right. They're a bit of a nuisance whenever I'm pulling up the zip of me. I mean, they're a bit of a nuisance with zips and things. Ah, uh, let's hope it doesn't rain for the parade. Oh God, I hope not. I'm sure the rest of the guild would somehow blame me. I'm so relieved this is over. Why? Because I didn't know how you would react. I didn't even know if you would know who I am. I've only been living round here six months or so. Oh, I've seen you out walking and cycling. And I saw you in the supermarket a couple of times when I was in there shopping. Sure, you're practically a neighbour. Oh, Jerry, you are one of nature's gentlemen. Jerry, I don't know what them stains are in your underwear. <laughs> Hello? Dory, this is Mrs Hickey. You can call me Ruth. Ruth, this is Dory Sinnott. She cleans for me. You should have seen this place a while ago. It was a bigger mess than Brexit. I'm sure Ruth doesn't want to hear about my bad habits. Uh, she brought a lovely cake. She baked it herself. Oh, it's only a small one. So I see. Dory, maybe you'd make uh, Ruth a wee cup of tea there. Oh, sorry, Jerry. Making cups of tea is not in my job description. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. She's usually trying to force tea down my throat. It's quite all right. I'd better be going. Uh, you will get the lorry fixed. Uh, as soon as possible. So will I see you again? Of course you will. You'll be sick of the sight of me by the time this is over. Indeed I won't. <laughs> Here's my number. Eleanor already gave me yours. Uh, which way is out? I'll show you to the front door. My mother always said you should go out the way you came in. So did mine. Jerry, we have so much in common. Aye, and we have mothers too. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's, uh, it's this way. Not make you sick. I thought you'd never go. Listen to them talking. I'll not be able to eat for the rest of the day. There you are. What the hell do you carry on like that for? Carry on like what? Refusing to make Ruth a cup of tea. It's just not like you. You were perfectly willing to make me breakfast earlier. Why wouldn't you make Ruth a simple cup of tea? I have my reasons. Reasons? What reasons? Well, she's a blowin', and worse than that, she's a divorcee. But so are thousands of other women. There's nothing wrong with that. Well, I don't agree with it. Sonny and me were married for 20 years, and we had our ups and downs. But I would never have thought of divorcing him. Not even when I caught him pressed up against that busty checkout girl, and he said he was only reading her name badge. <laughs> Well, I like Ruth, divorced or not. Oh, of course you do. You jump from one woman to another like a clag and cow dung. <laughs> Parading her here in front of me like that. 
Johnny, what are you talking about? It's at the front door. There you are. Oh, no. I think I'd rather go and look at your sins. <laughs> do you think I have nothing better to do than come running over here every five minutes looking for you? What, did you run out of young school leavers to sack? <sighs> That's all the thanks I get. I'm the one the doctors call when you take one of your fainting spells. You know you're not supposed to mix alcohol with the medication you're taking. And what am I supposed to do? Sit here in solitary confinement? Look, you can have people over. You don't have to drink. Oh, that sounds like a lot of fun. Well, if you won't listen to me, maybe you'll listen to Hugo. <laughs> you keep that jackass away from me. Don't you dare talk about my husband like that. I'm really proud of him. He's building up that fleet for his courier business. Fleet? He has one Berlingo van. Oh, you're changing the subject. I want your word that you'll stop this reckless carry-on. Hello? Oh, sorry, it's a really bad line. There's a burst pipe at the cafe. Well, turn off the water, you stupid girl. Who am I talking to? Is that Maria? Hello? Hello? Oh, no, she's gone. Look, I have to be going. But I'm going to come back and have this conversation with you again very soon. Just give me a wee bit of notice the next time, so I can have a couple of stiff whiskies first. <laughs> oh, very funny. And for God's sake, will you take off that awful green shirt? It's the same colour as your face. This shirt is not green. It's red. Oh, you and your colour blindness. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you for organising that burst pipe. God have a helping hand. <laughs> What the? Dory, you phoned Eleanor? I did. From outside the back door so she wouldn't hear me. But where did you get her number? Ah, you must have given it to me at one stage. Oh, I could kiss you, you know. In fact, I will. <laughs> You're a lifesaver. I'm sorry, Dory. Oh, I got a wee bit carried away. Don't be sorry at all. Oh, I'm not. Uh, are you all right? Oh, perfectly fine. Right. Uh, I'd better go out and do a few bits and pieces. You'll probably be gone by the time I get back. Oh, who knows? I might still be here, waiting. Right, I'll see you. <laughs> oh, what a man. Hello? Mona? It's me. Dory, you fool. I don't care if you're watching Pat Kenny. This is more important. He did it. He kissed me. <laughs> Jerry O'Malley, of course. And there was you saying he wasn't interested. Ah, don't be such an old killjoy. If I play me cards right, I'll be Mrs. O'Malley before you can say hard border. <laughs> Now, Billy, there's no need for threats. Come on, you'll get your money, I promise. Have I ever let you down before? Look, my father is a farmer, and he's got lots of machinery. I could help you get your hands on them. Interested? I knew you would be. Look, I can't talk now. We'll meet later. <coughs> and you better pay me what you owe me, sunshine, or you'll be hearing from my solicitors. That's the way to talk to those guys. Who are you talking? Oh, just some guy owes me money. Tries to tell me there's a credit squeeze. <laughs> My heart bleeds for him. Oh, darling. I'm so proud of you. Tell me again, Ellie. What are we doing out here in the bogs? Well, I lost one of my credit cards here last night. Did you? Yeah, damn it. Uh, speaking of credit cards, uh, there seems to be something wrong with mine. Uh, maybe you could let me have a, a bit of cash? Uh, sure. How much? Is 50 okay? Uh, better make it a 100 uh, and 50 if you have it. <laughs> okay, here you are. Oh, look at 
that be? Well, uh, you won't find that standing here. One missing credit card. Oh. Now for the pin number. Ellie's such a creature of habit. Should be here with all her other credit cards. Five, eight, two, zero. One number fits all. Thank God for unexpected visitors. Owner and Managing Director of Hugo for Hire. Uh, pleased to meet you both. You've heard of the company. I'm afraid I haven't. Are you a painter? I am not. I'm a courier. Uh, one of the fastest in the country. Oh, I thought that was against the law. What are you talking about? Being a courier. I thought that was against the law. He's not a courier now. He's oh. a courier. Oh! Ruth and Nell are leading members of the ICA, darling. The ICA? Full of stout women with platefuls of bacon and cabbage uh, and armfuls of crocheted cardigans. <laughs> we are not all like that, Mr Carter. Please make yourselves at home. Dad won't be too far away. Thank you, Eleanor. No problem. Look, we better be going. Come along, Hugo. If you need any of those cardigans shifted, I'm your man. I wouldn't be too keen on him. Hmm. I, I, I don't think you like him, do you? I wouldn't even like him that much. Hmm. He won't be driving the lorry, will he? Who? Hmm. That man? No. I told you, Jerry will be our driver. Oh. I don't think I'd like that idea any better. I heard he drinks. I'm sure he'll be sober that day. I have total confidence in him. Oh. I would need to see the lorry before I agree to anything. And I won't go anywhere near it if I smell any alcohol of him. Stop worrying now. I'm sure it'll all be fine. Oh, I don't know the idea of me up in the lorry and it moving gives me the nightmares. I keep thinking of the day I lost control of the shopping trolley with the wobbly wheel down in the supermarket and I broke my arm and concussed three people. That was a freak accident now, and we need you as the face of the guild in the 1970s. And besides, the lorry will only be crawling along. Well, for all the airs and graces of the daughter, the whole place doesn't have much say. They could do something with the upholstery of the seat for a start. It's a farmhouse now. What do you expect? And besides, Jerry is a widower. The place just lacks a woman's touch. That's all. Seems to me you've, you have a soft spot for him. He's just a very nice man, that's all. The only way to get that girl a cap in the foot. Your daughter let us in and she told us to wait. Uh, that's great. Uh, I'm sorry about the language. Jack and I were just... Uh, uh, being men, we understand. Uh, you both know Nell Moody? Oh, indeed we do. I know Nell since I was a child. You must have been in your 20s or 30s then. Yeah. Indeed I was not. <laughs> What's this about your lorry, Jerry? Nell's in a bit of a hurry. You said it was back from the garage? Uh, it is, it is. Will you excuse me for a second, Ruth? I just need to have a quick word with Jack about something. I suppose so. You take me out to see the lorry. No way. I'm not taking up on anywhere. Ah, please, please. I want to spend a wee bit of time with my own with Ruth. Are you mental? The last man that ever asked Nell Moody to go anywhere with him. 
Sure, he hasn't been seen since. <laughs> Here's 20 euros. I want 50. 50 euros? God damn it. Just keep her out there for a while. Hi. Use your imagination. Come on. Uh, I'm sorry about that, Ruth. I just needed to square Jack with a wee job I owed him for. And now, when are we going to see this lorry? Uh, Jack will take you out to see it now, Mel. And are you not coming with us? Oh, Jerry is a very busy man. He has a lot of uh, plans going on. Uh, thanks, Jack. Uh, the thing is, Ruth, there are a few things that I wanted to talk over with you in private. I thought we'd let Mel and Jack head on out to see the lorry and we'd follow them out in a few minutes. Is that all right? I suppose so. Change us already. Mark my words. Hope oh, this will all end in disaster. And you, you keep me away from any deep puddles. Don't you worry now. Everyone has its own life, Bill. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry about now. Not all our members are like her. We let her think that she runs the guild, even though she doesn't. So, what did you want to talk to me about? Sit down. I was hoping to be better dressed whenever I said this. I'm a man. I had guessed. And I'm a farmer. And if you ask me to talk about cows or calves or subsidies or the Rural Environmental Protection Scheme or the Common Agricultural Policy. Well, I could talk about them things for hours. It sounds like you already are. Yeah, uh, sorry. The thing is, since I met you last week and a couple of times I've seen you since, well, I've been thinking about you a lot. And I was wondering if perhaps you might like to come out for a Drink with me some night. I'd like of that. Of course, I realise that a woman with your style probably wouldn't want to be seen dead with a man like me. Especially the way I'm dressed now. So if you say no, I'll understand. But I said yes about five minutes ago. What? You did? You, you did? I did. You did? It, it's only a drink now. Why? Can't you afford a meal? Of course I can. Why do you say that? Oh, it's just that I heard farmers were a little cash-strapped. Are you trying to make fun of me? No. I'm trying to put you at your ease. You're so worked up. Well, we can go for a feed. I mean, a meal if you want to. Let's start with the drink and we'll see how it goes. Right. So, when are you available? I'll have to check in my diary when I get home, and I'll call you. Huh. Right. Looking up my diary is a very simple thing to do. It's just a piece of crumpled paper out by the phone. That's my diary. Oh, I'm sure it does just as well. So, where will we be going for this drink? I thought I'd bring you to the three ploughmen. <laughs> Wasn't that the place in the news recently for that big... Brawl. That's right. How many were injured? Ten. <laughs> but only five needed stitches. <laughs> anyway, that was a one-off. It's quiet normally. Right. <laughs> Look at your face. I got you nicely. Oh, you tease. Oh, I guess I deserved it. No, I wouldn't bring you to a place like that. Even the bouncers there have to bring their own protection. No. We'll go to a nice, quiet place in the countryside. Thank you. Jerry, can I have a quick word with you? Oh no, how the hell did you get in? The front door was open, so I came on in. But then I heard voices, so I waited at the room door. You mean you were listening? Mona McMahon does not make a habit of listening at doors. Oh, the country hotel sounds like a good idea. That tree found my place. It's gone down a lot in the past few years. You could find yourself wrestling some big hairy fella with tattoos and muscles, Mrs. Hickey. I'll go out and see where the others are. Uh, mind where you're walking. The lorry's out by the hay shed. Thank you. Oh, isn't that just sweet? 
Look, Mona, what do you want? I'm here on a mission of mercy. What? Well, you know me and Dory are best friends. I had heard. Well, I'd do anything for her. I even gave her Sony Senate when I had finished with it. Anyway, I want to try and stop her making a fool of herself. You know she has a thing for you. What thing? Come on now, you're not stupid. It's ever since she come here and started cleaning for you, you must be leading her on. I am not. Well, did you or did you not kiss her last week? Ah, that was only an old harmless peck in the cheek. Well, she didn't think it was harmless. She called me straight after. You're lucky she didn't jump you. I, I'm telling you, she already has you up the aisle. I didn't realise she thought like that. Well, she does. To God only knows why. What I mean is, you wouldn't be my cup of tea. Nah, give me a handsome fireman anyway. Anyway, I told her you'd probably have a flat battery under the bonnet. I do but not have a flat battery. Listen. I have no flat battery. Well, it's just as well. Because it'll be too late looking for a charger when Dory's expecting you to do the manly thing. No, you'll be grand with some quiet one that'll hold your hand and look through your stamp collection or whatever your hobby may be. Look, Mona, if that's all, I'm going to see you out. Look, just let her down, gentlemen. That's my whole reason for being here. Go on, I'll see you out. Look. <coughs> my whole reason for being here is that you let her down gently because she has a terrible temper. Well, I have no interest in Dory Sinnott. Well, whatever you say. Right, I'll go out the front door. I don't want that Jack of Doubt to see me because he'll tell Dory I was here and you know, she'd hit you as quick as she'd look at you. Jerry, something terrible has happened. What is it, Ruth? What's wrong? Nell has fallen into something unmentionable and your stupid friend just stood there laughing and now she's threatening to pull out of the parade. Oh, Jerry. Ah, there, there, Ruth. It'll be all right. It'll That's be it. all right. That's it, Jerry. You give her an old cuddle. She don't need your battery charged for that. <laughs> That sort of thing. Dory, he, he was practically naked. He had a towel covering his best bits. Still, that's more than he shows most mornings. I'm shocked, Dory. What the hell has gotten into you? What do you think has gotten into me? 
I'm up here slaving away in my own day in, day out, with hardly a word of thanks from anybody. And then I open the door on that dull Wednesday morning and see a hot farmer standing in front of me. <laughs> and then you have to come and spoil it all. Well, if it's flesh you want to see. If you open another button to that shirt, I will call the guards and I'll have you arrested for indecent exposure. And you want to? Tell me, what has Jerry O'Malley got that I haven't got, huh? Well, when I've had sirloin steak, why in the Lord's name would I want streaky rashers? <laughs> there were a few nights before Sonny Sonnet came along, you were only too happy to fall into my arms. Thank God I was so far gone back then that I don't remember a thing about it. Now, would you just get out of my sight? Trust you to ruin the only bright spot in my morning. I'll just have to go into the kitchen now and imagine the stale piece of Brillo pad as Jerry and give it a good squeeze. <laughs> I'll kill him, Ali. I'll kill him. Also none in my territory. There you are, you, you Judas. I trusted you with my woman and you've tried to seduce her. Don't be an idiot. I want to seduce Dory Sinner for a million euros. I, I'm going to kill you, Molly. I'm going to kill you. Stand your ground and take your beating like a man. <laughs> I'm not putting up with any more of this. Look, I was coming out of the shower when I my phone rang. I came down to answer it. It was Ruth. That's why I was dressed the way I was whenever Dory came in. No, I'll let you go. If you promise to behave, well, do you? When did you get so strong? I've been eating my shredded wheat. <laughs> now, let me get my wellies. And what the hell have you got that I haven't got? Maybe you need to change your aftershave. Now, go you on out. I'll be out in a minute. Oh, is everything all right out there? I heard a queer noise earlier on. I didn't bother looking. I come running as quick as I could when I heard poor Dory screaming. She wasn't screaming. Now go on. All right, if you just mind your carry on. Oh God, now what am I going to do? I'm trying to find a way of easing Dory out. And then this happens. Now she's more worked up than ever. And what's poor Ruth going to think? God, I better call her. Luckily, I have her number in the memory. Hello, Ruth. Uh, sorry about earlier on. You see, uh, what happened there was... Uh, uh, we'll have to have a long chat again sometime. Bye. You did that for me, didn't you? Yeah, uh, I have to go out. <laughs> You know that little display there this morning you did it for me, didn't you? No, of course not. I have never embarrassed you like that. And I want to apologise. That'll never happen again. Ah, don't say that. That's the best thing that happened to me since Daniel O'Donnell winked at me at that concert. You wouldn't do me a favour sometime, would you? That depends. You wouldn't uh, pose for me, you know, in your towel and all, so I could get a, a, a photo on my phone. I will not. Look, Dory, you come in here and do a, a bit of cleaning for me sometimes. That's all. Oh, look at this. It's a heart made for two. Dory, you and I need to have a long talk. Oh. All right. Mm. Oh, just when I thought the morning couldn't get any duller. Where the hell did you come from? Well, through the front door. Where else? I didn't hear the doorbell. Well, I, I let myself in. I have Ellie's key. After all, I, I am family. Just because you're married to my daughter, that doesn't make you family. Don't be so prickly, Jerry. So what do we owe the pleasure? Pleasure? I was in the area. Aye, so's the flu. But I don't want it in the house. Do you want me to get my sweep brush, Jerry? Oh, you're all right, Dory. You can carry on with your work. Oh, well, I'm not leaving you here on your own with that fella. So? You still haven't said what you came for. My van was overheating. I, I need some water. There's a tap out in the yard. You didn't have to come in for that. Why do you dislike me so much, Jerry? I, I never did you any harm. No, 
He never did anything full stop. You must be the only courier in Ireland to never go anywhere. Whoever named Hugh Hugo got it right. Short for huge ego. They're gone, they're gone, they're all gone. What's gone? Everything, the tractor, the trailer, the jeep, the flatbed truck, they even took out Henry's torch bed from over the shed door. Oh no, that must have been a queer noise they heard during your run. Bloody bastard. I better phone the guards for all the good that'll do. Uh, I'll do that. Do what? Uh, call the guards for you. Why don't you check what the damage is? Uh, I can do that much, and I want to help. Uh, thanks. Come on, Jack. Let's go and check and see what else is missing. Hello, is that the guards? Yes, uh, this is Hugo Carter here. Uh, I'd like to report a robbery at my father-in-law's house. Uh, Jerry O'Malley. Yes. Sorry for talking crap there. I've been watched by some old bag. She thinks I'm calling the cops. Look, I wanted to give you some extra time. Don't forget my share. Listen, it was me put you onto this thing, so I deserve my cut, or I might really call the cops. Uh, it was a bad line. Uh, Funny you turning up here just as Jerry's stuff gets stolen. Well, I hardly have it up my sleeve. Oh, I'd say you'd be capable of anything. What did Eleanor ever see in you? Oh, she was looking for charm, good looks, modesty. And when you didn't have any of those, what did she go for? <laughs> Shouldn't you be busying yourself with your broom or something? Oh, if I did have a broom right now, God knows what I would do with it. God, that was quick. I'll take back everything I ever said about the carrots. Mouldy old bat, a mouth on, on long life batteries. Well, I'll just hang around here for another few minutes and see what's happening. The lads are certainly smooth operators, I'll give them that. But they'd better give me my share. Is Jerry all right? Well, he's not great after a shock like that. Shock like what? The robbery, isn't that why you're here? No, I'm here about the phone calls. What robbery? Some of Jerry's machinery has been stolen. What phone calls? Uh, fascinating as the conversation is, ladies, I I'll just hit the road. Machinery? Oh, the poor man. Don't tell me his lorry has been stolen too. And what's that to you? Was it stolen or wasn't it? Don't you take that tone of voice with me. But my whole ICA float is depending on it. Oh, trust you to think of yourself and your gang of old hags when poor Jerry mightn't even have a tractor seat to pack his arse off. How dare you insult our guild like that? Oh, my back! Good enough, Lee. Oh. <laughs> what the hell's going on? Your housekeeper, she attacked me. I did not. And anyway, I was only standing up for you. There, there, Ruth, it'll be all right. Tony, what the hell are you playing at? You ain't got enough of me plate. I was after telling her about the robbery, and she kept going on about some old ICA yoke. It's not some yoke, it's our float. Is it true, Jerry? Has your lorry been stolen? I'm afraid it has. Oh, what am I going to do? I'll never get another one at this short notice. I'll be the laughing stock of the girl. See, she's at it again. Shh, Dory. I'll get you another lorry. I'll get her a horse and cart and dress them all up as scarecrows. <laughs> I don't think that's funny. That's enough, Dory. Jerry, I just have to go. I'm just completely frazzled. Oh, don't worry, honey. I was off in the same way myself at the after closing time. I'll see you. <laughs> no, Jerry. I just want to be left alone. Talk about a diva. There's no need to be so nasty. I wasn't being nasty. I was just giving her a few home truths. And anyway, I told you why. I was doing it for you. I can look after myself. But, Jerry, I want to look after you. You're special. Now, don't you be worrying about a thing. I'll take care of everything, and I'll take care of you. I'm going to have to do something about that woman. And fast. And where the hell are the bloody guys? <laughs> I wish 
I was famous enough to have my phone hacked. Are you even listening to me? What? I was telling you about the other day when he was sitting in that armchair and he had hardly a fliggit on him. I thought I'd died and gone to heaven. Are you sure you weren't imagining things? Of course I wasn't imagining things. I could have reached out and touched him. Oh, he was definitely trying to tell me something. Ah, uh, Jack. Poor Jack has a thing for you. The only thing Jack has is a soft spot in his head, if you ask me. Still, I have the memory of the moment. You know, I was thinking about going to confession and saying that I was having bad thoughts, but I've been enjoying them too much. You're hopeless. <laughs> Wouldn't you think he wouldn't be wearing a towel in his own house? A good job for him, he was. Anyway, you were saying earlier that he asked you over here today. Yeah, he said that there's something he wants to discuss with me. Maybe he's going to ask me to marry him. Maybe he's going to give you the sack. <laughs> You're like them bloody economists, full of doom and gloom. Are you nearly finished that tea? Why? Because he'll not propose if there's anybody here. So look, he's not even here himself yet. Where is he anyway? I don't know. But he could be back any minute. Shall I go if he comes? I'll make sure you do. I hope he hasn't gone to that Ruth Hussey's house. Mercy. I don't think I know her. Oh, she's that blowing from the north. She's only been here five minutes and she thinks she owns the place. I thought her name was Hickey. It is. <laughs> but Hussey suits her better. <laughs> oh, she's very glamorous, isn't she? <coughs> she is. If you like lipstick on a Brillo pad. <laughs> Probably puts her makeup on with a trowel and takes it off again with a blowtorch. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's she got over there for? Oh, I think she's looking for a broomstick for herself and the rest of the witch's coven. Well, what does she want a broomstick for? Ara, give me patience. I wasn't being serious. If you must know, she's looking for a lorry. What does she want a lorry for? Something to do with the ICA crowd. Look, you're jealous. Jealous of a one like that? Well, that'll be the day. Yeah. Any more than that stuff of Jerry's that was stolen the other day? No, not a thing. Jerry says that with all the cutbacks, it'll be hard finding another guard around here, let alone his machinery. Ah, oh. yeah. you're here. And you too, Mona. Well, hello, Jerry. God, it's not often we see you all dressed up on a work day. Yeah, but a bit of business to do. Um, we'll not keep you, Mona. Here, yeah, I have a drop of tea to finish, and I don't want to choke on me chocolate digestive. There are other ways of choking. Just give me a minute. Give me a minute. Would you like a cup of tea, Jerry? Just a cup in the hand. I sure was a fresh cup. Ah, uh, but every day every grand. Okay. So, Jerry. There you are, sitting in your armchair. Yeah, that's right. Hi, right, Jerry, there's your tea. Would you like a biscuit? No, I'll make some grand. So, now, Jerry, I hear you're going into a new line of business. Sorry, Mona. I'm not with you. <laughs> Stripping. <laughs> hey, I believe you nearly took the sight out of Dory's eye the other day. <laughs> Dory, you told her. Mona, it was an accident. Mona, I'll kill you. Right, that's it. Here, I'm not finished. Oh, yes, you are. Come on. Here, look. And we'll see them in the armchair set me off. Can't you take a joke? Not when it comes to Jerry. Now, come on. Here, I haven't finished with chocolate digest. So. You can buy a packet in the supermarket. They're reduced. I'll be back in the minute, Jerry. Oh, God. What am I going to say to her? This is worse than the night I proposed to Kathleen. God rest her. And I'd a ring for her. I better get ready to duck. Or I could end up with a black eye. I'm sorry about that. Um, I shouldn't have told Mona. Look, we need to talk, Dory. Oh, of course, Jerry, of course. Uh, would you like to sit down? No, I feel better standing up. Look, things can't keep going on the way they've been going on. I couldn't agree more. 
God, my knees is getting weak. <laughs> there comes a time whenever a, a man has to, has to... Oh, come on, Jerry, be a man, say it. Here, this will explain everything. <laughs> What's this? Open it and see. To a very special person. Oh, no, that's the wrong one. <laughs> have really brightened up my life in more ways than I can explain. Ah, that's so sweet. And what's this? Oh, it's a hotel voucher for two for a weekend in Letterkenny. Oh, Tony, you, you don't understand. A dirty weekend? <laughs> oh, Terry, I understand everything. Oh, Come here to me, oh, you like something. At last, I knew I wasn't a Maybe not. I'll get changed. But why don't you head home? Ah, sure. There's nothing there for me but a pile of dirty dishes. I think I'll stay here. I would rather have a few jobs to do here anyway. And I think I would rather do your dishes than mine. Oh, Jerry, you've made me the happiest woman in Ireland. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God, no. Thanks to my colour blindness, I mixed the two cards up. <laughs> Dory got the one meant for Ruth, and vice versa. Ruth said she wasn't going to open hers until it was gone. I didn't even write the names on the inside of either of the cards. I was in such a rush. Oh God, what am I going to do? Hey, what's up with Dory? She's singing like a blackbird in the kitchen. I have no idea. Uh, maybe she won a few euros in the lotto. Yeah, maybe so. When she asked me, she just told me to mind my own business. I hope you haven't been at your streaking again. <laughs> no, I haven't. And I wasn't before. Somebody must have got their finger stuck. <laughs> See who it is. I meant for you to see who it is by answering the door. You know, you're a great man at giving orders. I'm about fed up with this crap. Oh God, this just gets worse. You really have an in for me, haven't you? Just because I reduced the weekly collection to the priest by a few euros. <laughs> I promise, I'll give a few euros extra. You just sort this bloody mess out. You have a visitor and she doesn't wait to be asked, huh? Well, uh, Ruth. Could you leave us alone, Mr. O'D? I'd so downed. And I'd be happy to leave you stay. What is the meaning of this, Jerry? I can explain that, Ruth. I'm colourblind. I don't know about colourblind, but you are certainly thoughtless and insensitive. This is a thank you card. And just listen to this for a warm message. You've been hard at it for years. <laughs> Maybe it's time you put your feet up and get your hair done at fixing on me. What's wrong with my hair? Uh, there's nothing wrong with your hair. It, it, it's all been a mistake. A mistake. So, I just imagined you calling to my house and handing me this card. Oh, of course not. And this is your handwriting? It is, but... So where's the mistake? Uh, you see, that card was meant for Dory. She got yours by mistake. I mixed the two cards up. I'm colourblind. I wanted to take you away to Letter Kenny for a dirty weekend. Yes. No. No, that's not what I meant to say. I mean, I, know. I wanted to take you away to Letter Kenny to make up for everything. I know exactly what you meant. Do you think I'm that sort of woman? No, of course not. Jerry, I thought you were a gentleman. But you're just a man. Take your stupid voucher and your stupid card. Maybe they can wash your brain without your hair. 
The only bit of letter, Kenny, you'll be needing is the local A&E. I'm going to kill you! I'm going to kill you! Now what am I going to do? I've managed to avoid Dory for the last couple of days, but I can't keep avoiding her forever. Even Fiona Foyle had to face the music, eventually. That sounded like the back door. It must be her. I hear cupboard doors. It is her. That's it. I'm off. How did my life get so complicated? Jerry, are you here? That's odd. I'm sure I heard noise. Oh. Half a cup of tea and it's still warm. Half a slice of toast. Can't be far. Oh, was that the front door? That's strange. He always goes out the back door. God, if I didn't know any better, I would say he was trying to avoid me. But I have this card to say that he loves me. I wonder when has he taken me to letter Kenny? It would stop that Mona one from making snide comments. She's just jealous. The only dirty weekend she's ever likely to have is walking in a mucky field on a Saturday or a Sunday. <laughs> well, how are you, Dory? You? You have a nerve showing your face here after what you did to poor Jerry. Fuck, I don't know. I just lost it. When I heard he was taking you to... To Letter Kenny, that was that. I lost the plot. <sighs> Not that rubbish again. How am I supposed to walk around Letter Kenny with him sporting a black eye like that? You don't have to go. Oh, you would love that, wouldn't you? But I'll go and I'll enjoy myself. Now go on, get out of here before I change my mind and plant you. All right. I've got a wee something for you here to say I'm sorry. What's that? Open it and see. Oh, knowing you, it's probably a, a box of your used tea bags. A box of roses. Remember, they were always your favourites. Sure, the first sweets I got on our first date 25 years ago. But I couldn't afford a box, so I got out of Mrs. Kearney to put a few in a bag. <laughs> a grand gift to give a girl on a first date. Fancy you remembering that. Uh, I remember that and a whole lot more. <laughs> Suppose we did have a few good times, all right. We could have them again. <laughs> Every time I call in here, you two seem to be just staring into each other's eyes. Take these and go. Oh. You know very well I'm watching my wit. Oh, I give up. <laughs> you know, for an intelligent woman, you have this completely arseways. I beg your pardon. I'm not interested in Jack O'Dowd. It's your father I'm interested in. What? You heard me. You're interested in Dad. You're interested in my father. <laughs> oh, God, I've heard it all now. Well, just to let you know, he feels the same way. Take a read of that. Well, there's not a lot of romance there. And it's not addressed to anyone. You are deluded. Deluded am I? Take a closer look. Is that not your daddy's handwriting? Oh God. It is. And you know what's even better? He's taking me to Letter Kenny for a very dirty weekend. <laughs> I would show you the voucher, only I've left it at home. I think. 
Sick. Can I have my card back? Oh, what pleasure. You know, I just after thinking of something. What? I'm going to be your mammy. <laughs> right, I'm going to go to the shops and get a couple of cartons of milk, and I hope not to see you when I come back. <laughs> well, don't worry, back. And don't be worrying too much, because I won't be getting you to check behind your ears, or I won't be making sure that you've brushed your teeth, but you will have to knock when you come in. <laughs> oh my God! I cannot believe it. Dad, and Dory said it. I'm going to be the laughing stock of the golf club. <sighs> Ellie, uh, are, you, are you going to be much longer? I can't even open the windows of the van because of the smell of the farmyard. Isn't there some sort of deodorant to kill it? I'm sorry, darling, but I have to wait for Dad. <sighs> of all days for your car to be in for the NCT test, I have people to see. Well, try to be patient. Look, he shouldn't be too far away. I'll give him a ring and see where he is. Uh, listen, before you do that, uh, maybe you could uh, let me have a few notes. Uh, uh, this credit card mess still isn't sorted. Uh, I thought you were going to get on to that company. Uh, and I did. Uh, all I get is an electronic voice with, with options. Uh, I'll pay you back when it's sorted. I, I promise. Okay. I'm not sure how much I have. Um, is 50 enough? It's all I can spare. Uh, I guess it'll have to be. Thanks. Um, you know, you should carry more cash with you for emergencies. Um, what? Well, I, I'm all for the cashless society, but it doesn't hurt to have something in reserve. There you are. Look at your eye. What happened? Uh, I ran into a door. It must have had a fist for handles. I warned you about drinking. I wasn't drinking. I just love you country folk. You're all so basic. Uh, tell me, is there any word about the stolen items? No. Did you phone the guards that day? What day? The day of the robbery. Of course I did. That's funny. They no record of your phone call. Uh, probably the cutbacks. Saving the ink in their biros. Uh, well, look, I think I'll go and wait in the van. Ellie, don't be long. I don't trust that fellow one little bit. So what else is new? Now, forget about Hugo. What's this I hear about you and Dory Sinnott? Oh, that? Yes, that. Have you lost your mind? It was all a mix-up. I meant the card for someone else. But Dory got it instead. Now she thinks I'm taking her away to let her Kenny for the weekend. What am I going to do? Well, just tell her that you're not, and then sack her. <laughs> what she should have done ages ago. Honestly, you are hopeless. It's not as simple as that. It's complicated. Look, Dad, it's as complicated or as simple as you make it. It's easy for you to say. Dory has a terrible temper. I've been avoiding her since she got the card. I only came in there now because I saw her driving off five minutes ago. She's just gone to the shop. Oh no, that means she'll be back. Anna, has your black eye got anything to do with this? Uh, sort of. You see, Jack O'Dowd fancies Dory. And when he heard I was supposed to be taking her away to let her Kenny for the weekend, he... Uh, he punched you? He did. But it was a lucky punch. <laughs> My father brawling over the likes of Dory Sinnott. I just, I just can't believe it, Dad. Like, my reputation is so important to me. How could you do this? It's always about you, isn't it, Eleanor? I run a business in this town. I care what people think about me. I'm almost scared to ask. But that card that Dory got, who was it meant for originally? Uh, Ruth Hickey. Ruth Hickey. Ruth Hickey. Oh my God, well I've heard it all now. Why? Dad, a woman like Ruth Hickey would have nothing in common with the likes of you. She is cultured and refined. Honestly, why can't she just grow old gracefully and stop acting the clown? Oh. Thanks very much, Elder. Thank you. 
I think I'll just head out to the muck and dirt where I belong. Oh, Dad, I didn't mean it like that. That's the back door. It must be her. Oh, Dad, we will never learn. Oh, you're still here? Hmm, looks like it. I was just talking to Dad. Oh, where is he? Well, he heard you coming and he ran out the door. He's trying to avoid you. Avoid me? Why would he do that? Because he's not taking you to Leonard Kelly and he doesn't know how to tell you. You're lying. I'm not, actually. He'll tell you himself. Eventually. He wouldn't do that to me. He wrote me a card. The card was meant for Ruth Hickey. You got it by mistake. Well, if he tries to back out of our arrangement, I'll, I'll have him for a breach of promise. Well, I wish you lots of luck with that door. Now, I am off to the bathroom to freshen up. It might be best if you weren't here when I got back. Think again, lady. Mind you don't get flushed away. Stuck up cow. Wait till I see Jerry. He has some explaining to do. If he's been messing me about, he'll not just have one black eye. He'll have a matching pair and he'll get accessories to match. <laughs> oh, there must be a leak and tap because here comes the drip. Where the hell is Ellie? Who? My wife, of course. She's in the bathroom. Damn. Doesn't she realise I'm in a pressure cooker? Well, I'll leave you to simmer gently so. I have work to do. <laughs> oh. Once Ellie gets into the bathroom, she'll be all day preening herself in front of the mirror. Oh. Uh, what, what are you doing here? Billy asked me to have a word with you. But my, my wife is around, and there's a cleaner here too. What can I say? I'm a thrill seeker. Really turns my girlfriend off. I'm Billy's right hand man now. I get promoted because I've been the most guys in the hospital in the last six months. Do you like the suit? Uh, uh, sure, Frankie. It's class. Uh. I got it of a fella who doesn't need it anymore. <laughs> when I showed it to my ma, she cried. Uh, did she? Yeah. Oh. She always wanted to see me in a suit. She said, I'd make a great undertaker. Okay. Well, what do you think? You would, Frankie. You would. See these? Uh. I paid money for these. Though, I did break into the shop and steal it back again. <laughs> I keep these for special occasions. And they look good at funerals. See that stain? Yeah, yeah. I put six guys in intensive care and all I got was that one stain. And I still was home in time to fill my mass hot water bottle. Listen, Frankie, when I said I'd go to the cops and, and talk to Billy, I, I, I didn't mean it. Billy, I'm really joking. Billy doesn't like jokes, and he hates politicians, and he never smiles. Please don't hurt me, Frankie. I'm a very sensitive guy. You said you wanted your cut, Hugo. Well, I'm here to see that you get it. Mr. Frankie, if you let me go, I can get anything you want. You don't have anything I want. I can get you money. Keep talking. My wife's handbag is here, and she's got a credit card in it, and I know the PIN number. And? If, if I can give you the credit card and the PIN number, would you let me go? Give me the card. But if you try to double-cross me, I'll crush more than your lapels. Hugo, <laughs> what on earth is going on Ellie, here? Ellie, save me. Please save me. I, I know I fingered your father's stuff for them to steal. But I thought they'd write off the money that I owed them. 
I did it for the business. I'm sorry. You did what? Hugo, how could you? That, that doesn't matter. I'll give you your handbag. We've got to give him your credit card and pen number. What? He's got to kill me. Or worse, we've got to pay him off. Well, not with my money, you're not. Lady, give him the bag. No! Oh, well, Lord, I you God has stored your door fucking... Help me, Dory! Help me! Carried a scent yesterday. Oh, damn. Hello, Ruth. Did you get my card? I tried to pick a funny one. I thought a cat playing a brass instrument might fit the bill. So, am I forgiven? Oh, thank God for that. I was worried there for a while. I hear the parade's been put off for a week or two on account of the death of that councillor. Yeah, it's too bad. Listen, I'm going to have the lorry back in a day or two's time if you're still interested in it. You are? Uh, maybe you'd like to come around and talk about it. You would? What, right now? No, that'll be grand. All right, uh, I'll see you soon then. Bye. Oh, God, she's coming over right away. Look at the state of the place. Oh, God. Bad time. Well, that's a nice welcome. I thought we buried the hatchet the other day. And so we have. 
I, I, I'm sorry, it's just your call at a very bad time. Well, surely you have a couple of minutes. All right, so. Any word from the boy wonder? No. I changed the locks and threw them out, so that's the end of that. I've been so wrong about everything, Dad. Well, you said it. Well, you didn't have to agree with me. Fuck. Come here. I didn't mean it like that. Myself and your mother were always fighting and making up. When you said you were, ah, uh, you include Ruth and myself in that, that you were wrong with everything. <laughs> well, that's one thing I am not going to change my mind about, Dad. It would never work. Why can't you stick to the woman that you know something about? The four queens and a pack of cards, maybe? Look, I have to be going, but I'll call back again soon. No, oh, thanks very much, Eleanor. But I'll show you. I'll show you. Ah, oh, Jerry. You're very sad looking there. Yeah, I'm all right. You know, Mona was right. It would never have worked between us. I can see that now. I mean, Jack is so alive. Yeah, really? Look, Dora, you're calling at a very bad time. I'm expecting a visitor. He still has it, you know. Has what? It. I spent the last couple of nights at his place, and I hardly got any sleep. Well, you must be very tired, so. <laughs> you know, I'm beginning to wonder what I ever saw in you. I hope I'm not offending you now. Oh, no, I'll keep going. I feel minus 100%. Ah, uh, the thing is, I was desperate. And any port in a storm, as they say. You're all right for decoration, but I'm looking for someone to turn on my lights. Look, Dory, if that's all, I'm going to have to say goodbye to you. Now, hold on. I want to give you this. It's the voucher that you gave me for Letterkenny. Oh, you keep that. You and Jack can use it. We don't want charity. It's not charity. It's my gift to you both. Oh, all right then. But I want you to know... Jack is a very wealthy man. Oh, I, you can tell that, all right. <laughs> well, you can sneer all you want, but he had the good sense never to put money in the bank. He has a secret hiding place at the house. Look, Dory, you're really going to have to excuse me. I'm expecting someone any minute. Oh, the merry divorcee, is it? It might be. Oh, don't worry. I couldn't care less about her anymore. Tell me, is there any wiggling and jiggling going on yet? I barely know the woman. That's not what Jack says. He says you have it bad. Does he now? Oh, that'll be her now. I'll get it. No, there's no need, I'll manage. Nonsense. I am still the official housekeeper here until I work out for those. Well, just be nice to her. Am I ever any other way? Oh, why is my life so complicated? I hope this works out all right. But with Dory involved, Anything could happen. Your visitors are here. Visitors? Oh. Ruth, you brought Nell. Well, I got the impression it was ICA business. Oh, yes, of course. Well, I didn't really want to come here after the experience I had the last time. <laughs> I still can't get the smell out of my hair. Oh, I wish I'd been here that day with my camera. Won't you both sit down? Thank you. You should do something about the upholstery of this chair. Well, I've been meaning to. Maybe it's your arse that needs upholstery. <laughs> what was that? Nothing. Oh, J Jerry, what's this about your lorry? Nell is in a bit of a hurry. Oh, well, like I said, I'll have it back in a day or two's time. Nell, do you like flowers? Oh, I love flowers. I won prizes every year at the Manny Show. Do you show anything yourself? Oh, I do, from time to time, but not flowers. <laughs> Would you like a tour of the garden? Well, I don't know. There aren't any cows in it. Not a one. We don't have a garden. It's a bed of weeds. So she's going to get a tour of the dandelions then, isn't she? Look, these so-called experts don't know the difference between a, a weed and a flower. And anyways, 
I'm doing it for you, so you can be on your own with the merry divorcee. Thanks. Now, Nelly, you ready? Well, I don't know. Now, just keep me away from cows, puddles and donkeys. I will. Now, come on. You know, I'm on sleeping tablets since I was here the last time. And Dr. Schaefer says I may even have to see a counsellor. <laughs> oh, poor Neil. So, were you afraid to be in your room with me? Good heavens, no. Well, why did you bring Neil? Just to see the look on your face and how you deal with it. Well, the garden was Dory's idea. So, you don't want to be on your own with me? No, it's not that. It's just that... Dory got in with her idea before. I had a chance to put my plan into action. I thought she fancied you. Is that the expression? No, oh, that was last week. She's seen the light. <laughs> Jack O'Dowd is the only man for her now. Ah, the fickleness of love. So you like me, Carrie? Very much so. I was trying to be funny and say sorry at the same time. I'd have called around to your house. But I was afraid you wouldn't answer the door. I wouldn't have done that. Ah, you don't need many fancy words when a farmer dealing with, like me. I've something for you. It's just a dinner voucher for two to the red cow. <laughs> for you and a friend. If you have a friend. <coughs> Here you go. Oh, thank you, Jerry. There really was no need. And I know what friend I'll be taking. Do you? Well, I hope you both have a nice meal. The friend is you, silly. Only, you're more than a friend. I am. A dirty old crow's after shipping on mail from my right. <laughs> side of her head. Then she looked up to see where it came from and he must have been waiting right between the eyes like pebble dashing it was. Oh, it was horrible. And all that stupid woman, that was laugh. But it was hilarious. And you should have heard the language out of her. I didn't know ICA women knew words like that. There, there, Nell. It's okay. I'll get you cleaned up. No, wait now till I get a photograph. No, Dory, you can't. I just won. Let me get it. No, keep her away from me. Get that silly woman away from me. Stay still. I can't. I'll see you. Stay still. I just want to be a sport. Just one. <laughs> Jerry, how could you just stand there and not do anything? Oh, you don't stop, Dory. Send it in full flight. Anyway, Nell can look after herself. Now, where were we? Oh, that's right. You said that I was more than a friend. That's right. You know, you have lovely, clear, blue eyes. <laughs> you know I find farmers very earthy and sexy. Does this mean what I think it means? I think it does. What do you say now, Jerry? God bless the ICA. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.